So our focus for this video is about diseases that are caused by bacteria. And epidemiology is essentially the study of diseases and how they're spread and passed through populations. And if, some, is a, if a disease is termed an epidemic, then that means that at, there's an unusually high number of individuals that have that particular disease at that time. And so some years during flu season, we have an unusually high number of people who are sick with the flu at the same time, and so it, it gets termed an epidemic. Um, another really good example of an epidemic is the smallpox epidemic in North America um, in the 1600s. So Europeans begin to come over, start colonies, and with them, they brought their germs. And the Native Americans that lived on this continent had never been exposed to those particular germs before. And so when the Europeans brought them over, entire um, groups um, of Native Americans were completely wiped out by smallpox. Pandemic is when it is an epidemic that is worldwide, that is very widespread. And so historically, one of the best examples of that is the bubonic plague, which is, is sometimes termed the Black Death. It's caused by a bacteria, Yersinia pestis. And the picture that you see over here on the right is, is showing the swollen, large lymph nodes that they were called buboes, and, and that's how it, has, it got its name, bubonic plague. So throughout history, this has caused pandemics multiple times. One of the first ones documented was about 541 to 750, thought to wipe out about half of the total population of Europe. Um, and later, um, in London around the 1600s, we, we saw it again. And before that, in about 1350, it came to Europe again. This was a disease that was actually carried by fleas. Um, and so these fleas were, were infecting rats and then also biting people. Today, we have antibiotics to treat this particular bacteria, so it's not near um, the issue that it was then. But very recently, August of 2017, there were fleas that were test that tested positive for Yersinia pestis in Arizona. And just not long before that, there were three individuals in New Mexico who tested positive for this particular bacteria. So we're thankful for antibiotics that we can use for treatment today. Something that's, that's said to be endemic is when it is sort of constantly around in a particular area, but at a very low incidence. So an example of that would be malaria. There's always cases of malaria in tropical regions, but as long as that's at a fairly low level, then it's not epidemic or pandemic, it's just endemic. So let's talk about some specific challenges to the medical community today. And the first of those that I wanna talk about is biofilms. So these are bacteria that are growing together in a large community that are held together by this matrix that these organisms are secreting. These are what make up dental plaque on your teeth. They also colonize lots of different type of medical devices like catheters, orthopedics, and, and medical equipment. They are thought to cause about 65% of all hospital acquired infections. And the reason for this is they're extremely difficult to treat. They do not respond to antibiotics or normal sterilization techniques that are used in the medical community. We also have um, antibiotic resistance because we have overused and abused antibiotics. Many times people are given antibiotics when they have a viral infection. A virus does not respond to antibiotic treatment, so it will do no good to help with that virus. But what it does do is just puts so much antibiotic out there that it encourages bacterial cells to, um, and encourages the natural selection of any of those that have mutations that allow them to survive in the presence of antibiotics.
Okay. Another thing is we have abused antibiotics. When we're given a prescription and it's a 10-day prescription, and we feel better in five or six days, so we stop taking it and save that prescription for another time. Again, that is just a, that is just a way to help bacteria that have survived with the treatment of the antibiotic to continue to survive. Natural selection plays a role, and then we have more of these bacteria that can live in the presence of this antibiotic. We have um, also in animal feed, antibiotics are used as a regular part of animal feed in livestock. So just the low level of antibiotics being around all the time encourages mutations and encourages natural selection in bacteria. We also have what we call superbugs, which means these are bacteria that at one time were treatable by antibiotics, but some of our best antibiotics now they are they are not susceptible to. So one of them that you've probably heard of is, is MRSA, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Another um, topic or problem that is caused by bacteria is foodborne disease. Okay, it's not just meat or just one type of food, all types of food. Uh, Canned foods, fresh produce, all of these can be affected by different types of bacteria. So I've listed here for you just a few types of bacteria that cause foodborne illness. So one is Clostridium botulinum, which causes botulism, not a fun infection to have. E. coli is a bacteria that many times... Many strains of E. coli are normal and colonize our gut, but there's a particular strain, E. coli 0157H7, which has been in the news, um, which does cause foodborne illness. It can be in meat. It can be in raw vegetables. Salmonella is another one. Recently, there were um, foods found to be contaminated, such as peanut butter, different types of foods, alfalfa sprouts, and even eggs contaminated with salmonella. And so for those of us in, in Texas, we remember um, the bluebell issues uh, recently where bluebell was shut down because of listeriosis and had to go through lots of different sterilization techniques before they could get back up and running. 